Can we open up our Bibles to Matthew chapter 19? Give you a chance to be there. And it came to pass, when Jesus had finished saying these things, he departed from Galilee and came to the coast of Judah beyond the Jordan. And a great multitude followed him, and he healed them there. And the Pharisees came to him, tempting him, saying unto him, Is it lawful for a man to put away his wife for every cause? Of course, they were trying to trick him, because you don't win either way. Okay? So... And Jesus said unto them, Have you not read that he that made them from the beginning made them male and female? And he said, For this cause shall a man leave his mother and his father and, his, and cleave to his wife, and the two shall be one flesh. Therefore, uh, wherefore they are no more one flesh, for therefore God had joined together, let no man put asunder. And they said unto him, Then why did Moses say that you could give a writ of divorce and put her away? Wait a minute. Yes, verse 7. And he said unto them, Moses, because of the hardness of their hearts, suffered you to put away your wives. But from the beginning it was not so. Amen. Can I stop right there? Yes. Now it's a weird place to start. Now I'll tell you why it's a weird place to start. Because, he said, it wasn't that way from the beginning. Amen. So this morning, I want to go back and take a look at God's plan for marriage and family. All right. Our culture has really got things really messed up. Okay? And uh, I don't know how many they pronouns and all kinds of junk that they have out there. But... I know this, that marriage and family are the foundation of our society. Amen. So if the enemy wants to sh destroy us, he's going to attack marriage and family. Yes. yes. Because without marriage and family, it's chaos. Uh -huh. Amen? Yes. It's chaos. And so the enemy has done a great job. I want to read one more verse in introducing it because I'm not, by the way, I'm not talking about divorce today at all. I'm talking about, he said, it wasn't that way from the beginning. Mm -hmm. How many of us want to know what God's plan is for family and marriage? Yes. Because if we do it his way, yeah. Come on. it's going to work out. Yes. Yes. Right? Amen. Yeah, if we do it his way, it's going to work out. God, God produces, he's the one that made us. You know, every time I think of the Word of God, I think of a computer. Computers and I don't get along. <laughs> First of all, you have to sit still. I don't like doing that. Secondly, you also have to read. Okay? But I don't know how to operate them. So if I'm ever going to operate a computer without somebody's help, I'm going to have to get out the book and say, okay, where is the on button? <laughs> And by the way, I'm almost that bad, okay? That's why I hire people to do it off. Sherry and Angel and all those people do it for me. My wife used to. Sherry, turn on the flashlight. <laughs> yes. <laughs> now, she's been with me too much. <laughs> you know you can do that, by the way. If you don't know that, you can talk to Siri and say, turn on flashlight. You don't have to push the buttons over and slide them up. And, and she will turn it on for you. And when I get done, I say, shut the flashlight off. Aren't we blessed? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Aren't we blessed? Okay. Can we turn to Romans chapter 1? I, I want to read one more thing. Because I want, I, I think it's really important that we understand how the enemy has done his best to mess up uh, marriage and family. Romans chapter 1. Can we start at verse 18? 
For the wrath of God is unveiled from heaven against all ungodliness, all unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness, because that which may be known of God is manifest to them, and God has shown it to them. In other words, here's what he's saying. He's saying, listen, go outside and look, and you see the glory of God. Amen. Have you ever seen some of these humongous trees that are leaning about like this here, and you just say, how in heaven's name... Do those trees stay up there? Yeah. Well, let me tell you, because God created them to stay up there. Amen. All right? Amazing creation. What an amazing thing. Okay? And so he's saying, listen, we're all without excuse. I had somebody come to me and said, Roy, I don't believe in God. I don't know if the person's here today. They aren't here today. But anyway, they came to me and said, I don't believe in God. Of course, maybe, probably they're trying to shake my tree. It doesn't bother me a bit. You don't have to believe in God. It won't change that he is. Amen. 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 So you know what I did? I marched him right out. And I said, look up there at the sun. Come on. There's sun up there? Yeah. I said, here's what God says. As long as the sun stands and the moon shines, I am. Amen. End of issue. <laughs> End of issue. He is. Okay? And so everybody, listen, everybody is without excuse. Okay? You see God. You see the reality of God. You see the evidence of him. But it says, they knew that and still denied him. Let's go on and read a little further. For the invisible things uh, of, from creation of the world are clearly seen being understood by the things that are made. Even as the eternal power that God has, so they are without excuse. Mm -hmm. Because that when they knew God... They glorified him not as God, neither were they thankful, but they became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish hearts were darkened. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools, and changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into that of the images of man and birds and four-footed beasts and creeping things. In other words, they started worshiping the created thing that God created. Isn't that just like us? We get so confused. Have you ever been confused? Oh my goodness. Yeah. Therefore, God gave them up to uncleanness through the lust of their hearts to dishonor their bodies between themselves, who changed the truth of God into a lie and worship and serve the creation more than the Creator, who is blessed forever. Amen. For this cause, God gave them over to vile affections. Even did women change their natural cause and against that which is according to nature. And likewise, men, leaving the natural use of women, burned in lust one after another, men with men, working with that which is unseemly, and received to them the Death, the judgment of their ear. Listen, when we leave God out of the picture, we're left to the mercy of the evil one. And in the process, what happened? God's whole desire and his intention for family and marriage is all messed up. Yep. Yeah. And in our culture, okay, in our culture, unfortunately, that's what's happened. Yes. However, I want to go back and talk about, let's go back to Genesis chapter 2. Can we do it? I want to talk about God's plan. He said, from the beginning, it wasn't that way. Okay? So can we talk, can we go back and look at God's plan for family and marriage? Uh, by the way, how many of you have come from a messed up family? Oh, look at that. There we go. You know how messed up it can get, don't we? Yes. And by the way, listen, God is not mad or angry at people whose lives are messed up. But I'll tell you what he wants to do. He wants to restore and redeem that mess that we can stand unto the glory of God. Amen? And you know what? He almost got it with me because I almost divorced my wife way 25, I don't know. I mean, when I was, when I, we, 45 years ago. Okay, 45 years ago. Because, why? Because in my ignorance, I walked in pride and God saved me. He saved my family. He saved my marriage. All glory and praise and honor be to him. But this morning, I want us to go back 
And I want to look at God's intent for marriage and family. Yes. Okay? Because the enemy can come in and I'll tell you, if he wants to mess you up, he messes you up there, it really messes you up. Yes. So, Genesis chapter 2, verse 18. And God said, it is, oh, I'm sorry, thank you. I Forgive me, I opened my Bible to that. That's all right, you're on the Are we there? Yeah. Okay. Verse 18, and God said, this is James' favorite verse, I should let him read it. <laughs> it is not good that a man should be alone, uh, so therefore I will make him a help meet. Listen, not just men, it's not good for women, they're mankind by the way, That's right. Come on. to be alone. That's right. You realize that God made us for relationship. Yes. Yeah. I mean, there's some days that we want to go off and be alone for a while, right? Yeah, exactly. And if you get tired of all the noise and confusion and racket, then those precious kids become not so precious after they've made 20 messes in an hour. Uh, however, God's plan was to make a helpmate or to make complete, yes. by the way, is what that actually means. To make complete yes. a help made for Adam. Yes. Amen. Okay, that was God's idea. Because he didn't make us to be alone. And if you read what before that, uh, one of the things is Adam was naming all the animals and his gripe was God. All these have mates. Where's mine? I'm tired of talking to myself. Yeah, what about me? Verse 21. Can we read verse 21? And the Lord caused a deep sleep. Are we there? We're all there? 21, 22. And the Lord God caused deep sleep to fall upon Adam, and he slept... And he took one of his ribs and closed the flesh. And the other rib, which the Lord God took from man, he made woman and brought her to the man. Mm -hmm. So, God took and made his helpmeet literally out of Adam's body. Because he wanted her. To be treated Come on. the same way Come on. Yes. that Adam was. Yes. So Amen. men and women are equal. Yes. Amen. And I know in our society, God wants, I mean, the enemy wants all of that twisted. Right. Okay? Amen. And he's literally, no man, the Bible says, no man has hated himself. Listen, for him to not love his wife would have been to hate himself because she came forth out of him. And that's why God did it. I'm so amazed. You, my, many of you know that my daughter Abigail is pregnant. And, uh, and uh, she's getting out there. <laughs> I took her out for lunch yesterday. And, and uh, uh, she said, you see, see, he's moving. He's moving. And uh, she's only two months away. But literally, I got talking about, isn't it amazing how God and his wisdom causes the woman to carry that baby for nine months to love and to nurture and to prepare and care for that. And they're knit together. When that baby comes out of the womb, he already knows who mama is. Yeah. He's heard her voice and all that. God in his infinite wisdom did that. Yes. Okay? Because God is wise. Yes. And, I, I, and, and so for God to take a bone from Adam was simply saying, listen, she part of you, treat her accordingly. Amen. Amen. Well, at least half of you agree. <laughs> Maybe we need to preach another message for the other half. <laughs> No, I really believe that's why God took a rib out, a piece of rib. He said, you're, it's your bone. You treat her just as if it were you. That's right. Right? Amen. Okay, good. All right. I just want to be sure we're all living it. 
Right? Amen. Yes. Husband, good reminder. Treat her the way you want to be treated. Yes. Verse 23. And Adam said, so by the way, that is the beginning of family and marriage. Yes. Amen. Because he united them. Okay? Let's go on. And Adam said, now, this is bone of my bone, flesh of my flesh, and she shall be called woman, for she was taken out of man. So, I just want to inform you, because once again, our society has really tried to confuse us, and the confusion, they say there's something other than just a woman or man. Okay? I just want to tell you, God created man, and then he created a woman out of man. Anything other than that, I want to say to you, is Satan's confusion. Okay? Okay? And Satan wants to confuse us. Because you realize if he can destroy the foundation of family and marriage, we are destroyed. That's right. And he's done his best to try to do that. And the enemy comes and tries to confuse us. There's a lying spirit that wants to confuse us so he can destroy us. But I'm telling you the truth today. The reason he said it wasn't the way it was from the beginning. And I want to talk about the way it was from the beginning because he wants it to continue that way today. Amen. Amen? Let's go on. So she was taken out of man. Verse 24. Therefore, a man shall leave, leave his father and mother and cleave to his wife, and they shall be one flesh. Yes. So he's saying this is the way family should work. We're raised by our parents. But there comes a time when God's going to put you with a mate. Yep. And when that happens, it is important that you leave your family and start a new family. Yes. Right? right? Yes. right? Now, by the way, is God saying you can't live with your parents in the basement for no. uh, you know, a few months? No. <laughs> He's talking about the relationship between the man and the women, or the woman. Okay? Yes. So, he said, you leave and cleave, and that's the beginning of marriage. I want to read you what I label marriage to be. What is marriage? What makes a marriage a marriage? I happened to talk about this yesterday, too. I believe a marriage is a public declaration for a lifetime commitment mm -hmm. to a person of the opposite sex yes. that fulfills the law of the land unless it is contrary to God's law. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Shall we talk about that for a few minutes? Yes. I believe it is important that we make a public commitment yes. of being committed to a lifetime of marriage. Our society is so messed up, they do prenups. Mm. Why do they do a prenup? Because they expect to fail. They're saying, when our marriage breaks up, this is what we're going to do with the money. So the money means more. So they're already going into marriage with the ideology that it's going to fall apart. I want to say to you today, God intended marriage to be a lifetime commitment. Amen. And why do you think he wants you to make a commitment? Because it's going to be tough times. Be quiet. You're my wife. Don't tell her. <laughs> Listen. That commitment is meant to carry you through the tough times. Amen. You will have tough times if you're married. Yep. Because two people becoming one and knowing how to function as one is not real easy. Anybody have that experience? Good, I'm not the only guy. 
<laughs> oh, wow, she had the perfect guy. Okay, listen, listen. It's important that it's public. If it's not, I don't believe it's a marriage that's honored to God's eyes because God is a witness when we do it. Amen. You see, whether you know or not, you know, in the ceremonies they say, before God and man. Well, let me tell you something. He was there anyway. You didn't have to invite him. You have to invite him into your marriage. Yes. Okay? Because he won't intrude. You have to invite him into your marriage. But I tell you, he is a witness of your commitment. Yes. Right. And it's really important. Uh, I still have the ring. I can actually get my ring off. Whoop, I think so. Anyway, <laughs> I, have, I have the ring, okay? And you know why I have that ring? Yeah. Not just me, but yeah. those around you. Yes. I am committed. Yes. Amen. I am committed. Now, here's what happened. You know my story. Most of you know my story. I left my wife. God dealt with me to go back to my wife. Finally, I made Jesus Christ Lord. Went back to my wife. And it wasn't because I had any feelings towards her whatsoever. Well, I did have some feelings towards her. They weren't very nice. Okay, I did have feelings. I have to correct myself. They were not nice. But I knew without God, life doesn't make sense. And I'll tell you today, without God, your life will not make sense. Okay, it's that plain and simple. And so I went back to my wife. And here's what I said. Honey, you want me back? She says, yes, I'll do whatever it takes. Okay? It wasn't because I felt like it. It's because God honors marriage. And God said, you go back to your wife. All right. Best, best choice I ever <laughs> made. I almost said mistake. <laughs> best choice I ever made. Because, listen... Listen, everybody loses in a divorce. Yes. Yes. Right. It breaks up what God intends. Right. By the way, God loves divorcees. Yes. yes. But he hates divorce. Yes. Because he intended marriage to be a lifetime commitment. Amen. Okay? Through the good times and the bad times. Now, I'm a little weird probably. You all know me a little bit anyway. Yeah. And I am a little weird. No, a lot weird, my wife says. In a good way. But you know my wife's health has gone downhill, and uh, one of the things that uh, God began to train me in years ago is I'd see times when my wife would put her hands down because her back was hurting so bad just to take the and I began to learn to feel her pain mm. oh. and care about her pain. And now it's got to often she needs help getting up. God has done such a deep work in my heart. He sure has. To love her. That actually, I enjoy being able to be there for her, to help her yes. up. Yes. Amen. Of course, I have to do most of the wash. I have to do a lot of the cleaning. I have to go do a lot of the shopping. All that kind of stuff that she can't do anymore. But you know what? It's an opportunity for me to love my wife yes. in a way that I never have. All right. Listen, that's what God wants to work yes. in us. Yeah. Amen. That kind of love. Yes. That even when it's tough, yeah. it's unshakable. Amen. Amen. And the only way we can make that is as we make a, a public commitment. If, if someone wants to do a prenup, I'm telling you, it ain't going to work. Don't kid yourself. You that means money means more to them and things means more to them than you. And I, I'm, I'm warning you, don't go right. for it. There don't you know. buy into it. Okay? Find somebody that really loves you and is ready and willing to go through it all with you. Amen. 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 Can we give the word of praise? Yes. yes. And I know somebody might, probably you guys, none of you are rich enough to worry about what you have, so probably you've never done it. But for a rich person, they say, you just don't know what you're talking about. I do too. Because when God says it wasn't that way from the beginning, listen, we want to do it God's way. If we're going to have something that's so precious and so valuable, we need to do it God's way. 
Yes. And the reason I want to talk about this morning, because listen, the, this our world has really messed up marriage. Yes. Yes. But you know what? We can go back there and get it right. Woo! Okay? So, so even with divorce, God loves divorcees. He hates divorce. Yes. And you know what? God can redeem a divorcee. But I just, I just want to say, I would have been there if it wasn't for the mercy and grace of God. But listen, it's really important that when you get married, you do it God's way. Yes. Now, I also said part of being married and what it looks like is meeting the laws of the land. I was talking with somebody yesterday about this very thing. And there's a girl that she knew that was wanted to get married but didn't want to do it legally because they could stay on their dad's car insurance and stay on whatever else it was. A couple different things. Health insurance and whatever. And my thought is you care more about things than you do that person. Mm -hmm. You're going into that marriage already mm -hmm. on the wrong foot because you haven't done it God's way. Because listen, the, the laws in the land, God says, honor them. Okay? Mm -hmm. Amen. You know why? Part of, part of the reason, I, I have never given it a whole lot of thought, but part of the reason is if you aren't married, and you have a baby, who's responsible? Mm. Mm. And so the laws in the land make the people responsible, if you're married, to step up to the plate. Mm -hmm. yes. Okay? And I know, God forbid, I, I'd like to think, although I've heard, I've heard people say it. I heard somebody say just the other day, I went into it knowing it wouldn't work. And I say, what in heaven's name are you thinking? <laughs> I, I don't get it. I, I, I really don't get it. Uh, but once again, maybe the enemy's got them confused. So a real marriage is a public commitment, a lifetime commitment to a person of the opposite sex that fulfills the law of the land. Amen? Amen. Good. Awesome. Let me see what, where I want to go next. I want to go to verse 24. Okay, Let, let's, let's read verse 25. And both of them were naked, man and his wife, and were not ashamed. Why were they not ashamed? Vulnerable with each other. They could be vulnerable with each other. By the way, who came up with the idea of sex? God. God? God? <laughs> uh huh. Of course he did. Serpent. God's idea. God's idea. We're going to talk about our sexuality in another week or two. I'll let you know ahead of time so you can miss it, okay? <laughs> because God has a plan for our sexuality, too. Amen. Yes. Does he? Yes. yes. It's amazing to me that actually God made sex fun. Yes. I mean, for most of us, anyway. Yes. You know why? Because he wants us to do it. However, under his parameters. There you go. There you go. Have you noticed? God makes eating fun too. Well, if your wife isn't a bad cook. I'm the cook now, so we're in trouble. Okay. Listen, everything God wants us to do, you know, I heard somebody say, they have a problem with lust. I said, I do too. I enjoy my wife. Amen. It's lust contrary to the ways of God that's bad. Amen. Amen. And I believe he makes everything that's good enjoyable, that everything that's right to be satisfying yes. and fulfilling. Okay? Yes. Make sense? Yes. Okay? So he makes us lust after food. When does it become sin? When you eat more than you should. Yes. Can our sexual lust get out of order? Yes. Yeah, it sure can. We'll talk about that in a few weeks. Okay, let me see. By 
the way, it says that we were made in God's image. That's an interesting thought. Mm -hmm. How were we made in God's image? Let me tell you a few ways. I believe it's more than one. God is, when God said, he said, let us make man. He said us. Why did he say us? Because they function, God the Father, God the Son, and the Holy Spirit function as one. Now, if you're as simple as I am, that's kind of hard to comprehend. However, I, I think the simplest way, that I, because God made us like him. Mm -hmm. So we're made up of three parts. Mm -hmm. How many of you know that? Yes. Yeah. Okay. We have a body. You know that. All about that. Because we have to deal with that all the time, right? Yep. We have a soul. That is our mind, our will, and our emotions. Yep. And we have a spirit. So we're made of three parts. The spirit is where God comes to dwell when we invite him in. Okay. That's where he, he abides. So, we're made in the image of God. Amen. Okay? And so, uh, when you begin to realize that, you say, and more than that, we are also made eternal. Mm -hmm. Do you realize? I know, I, I, I better be careful. <laughs> <laughs> All the other animals are not eternal. I've had some people ask me, do dogs go to heaven? I don't think so. <laughs> Yeah, I may be wrong, but I, the only thing that's made in God's image is us. Yes. We are made to be eternal mm -hmm. and spend eternity with God. Mm -hmm. Amen. That's marvelous. Yes. Amen. We're made in his images like this. He's eternal, and we're made eternal. Now, we're not made eternal like him. You know why? Because he always has been. Right. We haven't. Right. There is no beginning with God because he always has. Now, you and I are so simple and so small, we can't comprehend that. Mm -hmm. I can't. Maybe you're a lot brighter than I am. But I can't comprehend that we are made in his image, and yet he always has been. Okay? Almost done. However, God said, be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and subdue the earth and rule over it. And I didn't tell you where that's found. Let me see where that's found. I wrote it down someplace, I'm sure. Oh, Genesis 1, 26 through 28. Genesis, let, let's go ahead and read that. Genesis 1, 26 through 28. Here we go. And God said, let us make man in our image and in our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and the earth and every creeping thing that's upon the earth. So God created a man in his image. In the image of God, he created him male and female. So, uh, in the last it says, And God blessed them and said, Be fruitful, multiply, replenish the earth, subdue it, have dominion over the fish of the sea and fowl of the air and every living thing that moves upon the earth. So God said, Listen, I want you to be re fruitful and multiply, mm -hmm. and that's where the family comes in. Yes. Yes. So God wants us to have families. Amen? Amen. Yeah. Awesome. And so that's part of God's plan of marriage. And there's one more thing. God established marriage and the family as a foundation for stability and security for mankind upon the earth. Yeah. I'm going to close with a quiz, quiz for you. What was Adam's wife's name? Oh, man. Oh, man, yeah. Actually, where did he give her her name? Anybody know? Genesis 3.20, it says this. And Adam called his wife Eve because she was a mother of every living thing. So she became a mother. God wants children. Yes. How many of you love kids? I love kids. As long as they're somebody else's. <laughs> not, really, not, not really. Not really. Amanda's kids live at our house half the time. 
And I, you know what, I got the best. She has to feed them, she has to, to take care of their clothes and all that. And I get to enjoy them the rest of the time. I get to enjoy them, so. <laughs> Uh, actually, it's really his a joy to have her children. My, my son raised his kids in pain, so we didn't get to enjoy them much. And my daughter raised her kids, was always in another state, so I've really got to enjoy Amanda's children, and uh, so on and so forth. God's plan for marriage. Yes. Anything contrary to that will lead you to destruction. You hear me? Hear me this morning? Yeah. Anything contrary to that will lead you to destruction. So, can we come against, I hope we've come against, you know, I could go on for hours and talk about all the lies about our sexuality and stuff today. I don't need to do that. If I give you the truth and you walk in the truth, you know what? The lies will expose themselves. Yeah. Because I gave you the truth this morning. Yeah. Because there's so many lies out there today. And, uh, can I, can I just pray a blessing upon the families in this place today? God, we just thank you for your good plan for marriage and family. And God, today, you know, some of us have really blown it. The good thing is, God, you're the redeemer. That God, you can heal and you can restore. That God, you can make whole. That you can take that which is broken and heal it. And, and, and God, today, you know, some of the people that have sat here that said, I came from a broken home. God, we're just asking you to undo that. Will you heal their hearts? Will you heal the minds, oh God, that they might be able to break the curse that the enemy has tried to bring into these lives, in these families, that their families will function, oh God, according to your ways and glorify your name, oh God. Thank you, God, for showing us the truth and help us to continue to walk in the truth. In Jesus' name.